Welcome to this uh, short talk on moon sightings. So I'm Phil Sutton and I'm a lecturer in astrophysics at the University of Lincoln and I'm just going to have a very quick brief look at uh, moon sightings, kind of what they are um, and the fact that they're not always the same. So we're going to have a look at what a new moon actually is and you know, why they might be different each time around. So there's not always going to be in the same part of the sky. Sometimes they might not even be visible at all. And I thought I would just finish on something a little bit interesting that the Earth Moon system is 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 changing. Uh, it has been for you know a considerable amount of time. Does that actually affect our lunar calendar going forward? And I just want to finish on that as a as a bit of a question really. So some background about me. So as I mentioned, I'm a lecturer at University of Lincoln. Um, my main kind of interests are planets, moons, planetary rings. So pretty much a planetary scientist. I'm interested in how the, the moons interact with planets, how they interact with ring systems, things like that. Anything to do with planets and moons really is what I'm really interested in. So the importance of a new moon. So we hear about new moons all the time. Um, in a lot of religions, a new moon will signify the start or finish of a particular event. Um, and this is common throughout many religions. But for example, some important events might be Eid or Ramadan, uh, which is part of the, the lunar Islamic calendar. And you know, they're very important for signaling when it should start, when it should end, and you know, an incorrect sighting or dating can throw things out and you know there's always issues of certain countries declaring um, the start of particular events on different days which can cause confusion um, but scientifically it's going to happen at the same time the local sightings obviously change uh, we'll have a look at why that might be the case in a little bit this is a lunar calendar and you can see the different phases of the moon so it's the, it's the phases of the moon which actually give us our lunar calendar and it will start kind of at a new moon so if I so up here you would start with a new moon or well, typically it's actually just after a new moon when it's first sighted and then you'd go through the full phase um, until it started another one and that would be our lunar calendar and again a lot of religions use this as part of their calendar system so as I mentioned you know, depending on where you are, you will actually see the new moon or, or you know, locally sighted at a different time, even a different day. Sometimes it just isn't visible anywhere. So sometimes you you, you not you won't a, won't be able to see it. Uh, and on those circumstances, how do you actually signify when to start a, a particular event? Um, so we'll have a look at why that might be the case. And there's actually a really good website you can have a look at that give you a visualization of where on the planet you get to actually see these and where you can't see them. So first let's have a look at what an actual new moon is. So a new moon is going to be when the moon is kind of directly in between the earth and the sun. So if we look over here we've got the, the sunlight basically coming from the sun from right to left. We've got the moon which is then in between the earth so when it's directly in between the earth and the sun that's when we're going to get our new moon now it might seem fairly obvious that at that point there's not going to be any sunlight reflecting off its surface so from an observer here we're not going to really going to see the moon because there's no sunlight reflecting off it um, we wouldn't really see it um, but when it starts to move further around on its orbit then we get a very thin crescent around the outside and at that point we can then observe it. Also we should probably note that we have to be on the day side of Earth to then see the, the new moon. So again this all causes uh, some problems but typically the, the a new moon observed from the surface of the Earth it's going to be around about seven degrees after the actual new moon. So when a new moon sighting happens it's not actually the new moon it will be slightly after because one, it's during the day, um, and you're not going to have any sunlight actually reflecting off it. So, and as you can see, you've got the moon 
going around the earth there. And you can see how the the side facing towards the right, which is where the, the sun would be, is reflecting the light back. And when it's on the right hand side, from an observer on earth, we wouldn't necessarily see um, any light coming back off the moon. So we can only really observe the new moon on this side of the planet. It's purely geometry, it has to be line of sight. So if we're sitting on this sphere, uh, on the night side of the earth, you know, we can't see the moon because it's actually going to be over here somewhere. So we have to be on the night, on the day side of the planet. So typically you're going to be, it could be better down here because it'd be a bit darker. You know, you don't, you don't be able to, um, if it's directly in the middle of the day, it'd be hard to see. But if it's just kind of, um, the sun's just setting or just um, rising, we'd have a better chance. But at that point, as you can see, the angle there, it's going to be quite low on, in the sky. So to see the, the new moon, it's going to be quite difficult because it will be quite low down on the sky. Um, but again, we're looking for that small crescent as it's moved slightly around on its orbit. Now, what that would mean, if it's had to move around on its orbit slightly, up this way, it's more likely going to be better observed up here than on this hemisphere of the Earth. So again, that's going to give you a difference, really, on where it's better observed. It isn't, it isn't going to be observable everywhere on the planet. There's going to be locations where it's better observed. And it's going to change throughout the year, uh, from month to month as well. And why does that happen? So just to put that degrees in context of time, um, that's seven degrees further around on its orbit. So if it's going around the Earth, that seven degrees basically corresponds to about 11, 15 hours after the true moon. So once it's finished being you know, directly in between the Earth and the Sun, it's moved around slightly, and it that's typically going to be about 11 or 15 hours after it was the, the actual scientific new moon that you, you would sight it, and, and then you could declare a new moon at that point because you need actually the, the sunlight at that point. So, although I said you can't actually see uh, the moon during the new moon, you can actually still see part of the moon, even when it's not been illuminated by the sun. You get something known as earth shine. So actually, the, if we go back a slide, you've got the earth here. Now, the earth's fully illuminated by the sun. It's quite bright. That light that's hitting the earth then is reflected back out into space. And some of it will hit this side of the moon. And then you will be able to see, see a bit of the moon. It's not going to be as bright as if the sun was shining on it for obvious reasons. The, the Earth isn't throwing out as much light as the sun, but there's enough reflected light from the Earth to, to allow us to see some of it. So if you get a camera on it, the long exposure, you still get a nice picture of the Earth. You can still sometimes see it uh, naked eye. Um, so you get this, and this is from Earth shine. So it's actually light reflected back from the Earth, but that's not what we're interested in. What we're interested in for a new moon is this really small crescent around the edge. Once you've observed that, that's when you can signify that a new moon has been seen and you could then start your event or end it. So some things actually alter where we're gonna see it, if we can see it or not, is actually Earth's tilt. So as you're probably aware, we get our seasons from the fact that the Earth is tilted slightly due to its actually movement around the sun. So you have this ecliptic plane, and that's kind of the, the orbital plane that the Earth is going around the sun. Now, because it's tilted over slightly, as it's going around the sun, um, different parts of the Earth is illuminated more or less. So this is where our seasons come from. But then if you look at where the moon is as well here, um, as that happens, the moon's going to appear further up or down depending on the orientation of it, because you're, you're moving that rotation axis. So it moves the location of the moon in the sky, depending on the year. Uh, it also would make it appear to rotate to different parts of the year. Because it's moving up and down in the sky, 
Um, it's a slightly different orientation. When we actually look at it in the sky, it would appear to slightly rotate it. So it's a slight um, different orientation. And that completely exaggerated that there, just to give you an idea, but it, it's not perfectly still in the sky. There's a slight wobble to it. So yes, because of this particular tilt, um, and depending on where you are on the planet, the new moon could be sighted, or you might see it in a slightly different location in the sky. Um, sometimes it might be you know, very close to the horizon, other times it might be a little bit higher. And other times you won't actually see it at all because where you are at that particular time of the year, it's just not in the night sky at that, that, that particular time. So you wouldn't be able to see it. And you might have to wait until you know, the next day or something, which is where these kind of discrepancies come from declaring a new moon between countries because of where they are on the planet, they might be a bit further around. They have a better observability and they see it first compared to a neighboring country. And this is where it would come from. And because of this, some of it relates to the tilt, there's a few other things that would change where it would be. So another thing actually is kind of the orbital period of the moon. So when we think about the moon going around the earth, you might just think of it as being quite isolated. You know, one orbital period relates to the lunar calendar. Well, it's not technically true because actually the Earth is moving around the sun at the same time. So for us to kind of see it in the same part of the sky, for us, the moon has actually had to go around slightly further than a complete orbit. So if it's done a, a full orbit, you know, 360 degrees all, right, all the way around the Earth, and that would be known as the sidereal period. And that's one complete orbit. But that wouldn't put it in the same part of the sky each time. So you then have this synoptic period, which is actually where it's gone around one full orbit and slightly more to allow it to be in the same part of the sky. Um, so the lunar calendar basically uses this, this particular period, this synoptic period. Um, so that's what the lunar calendar comes from. The sidereal period is purely one full route, one orbit around the Earth. But the, because the Earth is also orbiting the sun, um, so it happens at the same time of the day and things like that, it has to move a little bit further. So that then relates to things like the moon's orbit. So the moon's orbit itself is also slightly tilted. So it has a little bit of an inclination. And as it goes around that orbit, every time we sight a new moon or a full moon, or any part of the lunar calendar really, it's going to be on a different part of its orbit. Now, because of that, it'll be slightly higher or lower on its inclination with regards to the Earth, the Sun system. And that then you know, influences how it's easy, not easy to see. It changes where we can actually see it in the sky, things like that. It also influences things like the solar eclipses. So we don't see solar eclipses in the same country, the same part of the year all the time. It varies. Um, and it's the same thing for, kind of for the new moons, really. Because of this inclined orbit, the tilt of the Earth, and the fact that the moon is not doing one full orbit, it's going slightly more, it's in a slightly different place each time. And that alters you know, the observability of these new moons, depending where you are on the planet. So something really good to have a look at. Uh, so there's a few about, this is a, a good example. If you go on this website, it actually shows you the observability of a new moon, you know, depending on what new moon you want to observe, most likely the most recent one. So I've just pulled an image off there um, for the 21st of July, 2020. And it gives you kind of like a visual representation of where it would be easy to see and where it wouldn't be able to see. So looking at this particular new moon, it's going to be very observable in the Americas, and Africa. So you'd be able to see that quite easily naked eye. Um, and then as you went further east, then it's going to get more difficult. So kind of over Central Asia, it, you'd be able to see if it was you know, perfect conditions. And then as you got out towards kind of um, Japan, Australia, that sort of um, area, then actually you're only going to be able to see it if you're using optical aid, so basically a telescope, because it's going to be very difficult to see. And then all the black regions, 
So here, not observable at all. But if you actually look at different new moons, sometimes there might only be a very small section, which is um, easily observable. Others could be widespread. And this is sometimes where there's a big problem, when actually there's a very low visibility for that particular new moon, depending on you know, the orientation of the systems. And um, this is what causes us some issues. But I thought I'd just finally finish on something to do with the Earth Moon system, which is more interested in you know, my area of work. So since the Earth and Moon formed a long time ago, they haven't been static. So the Moon is actually moving further away and the Earth's rotation is, is kind of slowing down. So it used to rotate a lot faster, which meant our days were probably about 16 hours long as opposed to 24 hours. So the Earth was a lot faster rotating, the Moon was a lot closer, but it, it's actually moving further away. And as it's, as, it, as it's moving further away, the Earth is slowing down and it's because the Moon is causing tides on the Earth, it slows that rotation down. Um, it has to make sure that it's your energy of the system is kind of conserved. So for the Moon to move further out, it's going to gain a bit of energy. It then means the Earth has to lose a little bit. So when they went to the moon, they put some things on there so they could actually um, shine a laser, measure the distance. And they found that actually, you know, over the 50 odd years, that it's moving almost four centimeters a year further away from us. And Earth Day is, is getting longer. I mean, that's a particularly small number per year. But what does that mean? Well, it means that our lunar calendar probably isn't static going forward, it's likely going to change. It's probably not going to be significant, nothing to really worry about. But this particular system, you know, it's not stationary or static. It's, it is actually evolving. And if we're still around in a few billion years time, then our lunar calendar is likely to be slightly different than it is quite now, which is just something interesting to finish on really. So thank you for listening.